of Toad Hall. Toad lay on the floor of his prison cell, crying and wailing and refusing all food. <laughs> oh, unhappy and forsaken Toad, <laughs> he sobbed. How can I hope to be free again? <laughs> now the jailer had a daughter, a good-hearted girl, who said to her father one day, I can't bear to see that poor beast so unhappy. You know how fond of animals I am. I'll make him eat from my hand and sit up and do all sorts of things. And as the days passed, Toad grew better and more like his old self again. But one morning, the girl did not seem to Toad to be paying proper attention to his witty sayings and sparkling comments. Toad, she said thoughtfully, just listen, please. I have an aunt who's a washerwoman. There, there, said Toad. Never mind. Think no more about it. I have several aunts who ought to be washerwomen. Do be quiet, Toad. I'm trying to think and you hurt my head. As I said, I have an aunt who does the washing for all the prisoners in this castle. She takes the washing home on a Monday and brings it back on Friday night. Today is Thursday. Now, this is what occurs to me. If you asked her properly and gave her a few gold coins, she might let you have her clothes so that you could escape dressed as the official washerwoman. You're very alike in many ways, particularly about the figure. Well, not alike, said Toad in a huff. I'm a very elegant figure, and you surely wouldn't have Mr. Toad of Toad Hall going about the country disguised as a washerwoman. But after much soul-searching and protestation, Toad finally agreed to the plan. So, the next evening, the girl brought her aunt into Toad's cell, and in return for a few gold coins, the old lady gave Toad her cotton dress, apron, shawl, and black bonnet. Shaking with laughter, the girl dressed Toad in the old lady's clothes. <laughs> You're the very image of her, she giggled. Now, goodbye, Toad, and good luck. With a quaking heart, Toad set out. It seemed hours before he crossed the last courtyard and heard the wicked gate in the great outer door click behind him, felt the fresh air of the outer world upon his brow, and knew that he was free. He walked quickly towards the lights of the town, not knowing in the least what he should do. But as he walked along, he saw some red and green lights a little way off, and heard the sound of puffing and snorting engines, and the banging sound of shunted trucks. This is a piece of luck, he thought. A railway station is the thing I want most in the world at this moment. Toad sighed contentedly and pulled his shawl about him. He made his way to the station and found a train bound for Toad Hall leaving in just half an hour. More luck, said Toad as he went to the ticket office to buy his ticket. Then, to his horror, he remembered that he had left both his coat and waistcoat behind him in his cell and with them his money. Full of despair, he wandered blindly down the platform where the train was standing, tears trickling down each side of his nose. Very soon his escape would be discovered. The hunt would be up. He would be caught, loaded with chains and dragged back to prison. What was to be done? As he pondered, he found himself opposite the engine. Hello, mother, called the driver. What's the matter with you? You don't look very cheerful. Oh, sir, said Toad, crying again. I'm a poor, unhappy washerwoman. And I've lost all my money and can't pay for a ticket. And I must get home tonight somehow. Whatever am I to do? Oh, dear, oh, dear. A bad business indeed, said the engine driver. Lost your money, you say? Can't get home. Got kids, too, waiting for you, I shouldn't wonder. Any amount of them, sobbed Toad. And they'll be hungry and playing with matches and upsetting lamps and quarrelling and carrying on generally. Oh, dear, oh, dear. What am I to do? Well, I'll tell you what I'll do. You're a washerwoman. Very well. If you wash a few shirts for me when you get home and send them along, I'll give you a ride on my engine. Toad's misery turned to rapture as he scrambled up into the cab of the engine. Of course, he had never washed a shirt in his life and couldn't if he tried. 
But, he thought, when I get home to Toad Hall, I'll send the driver some money to pay for his washing, and that'll be the same thing, or better. The guard waved his flag, the engine driver whistled, and the train moved out of the station. But as the speed increased, and Toad thought of what he would have for supper as soon as he got home, he suddenly noticed that the engine driver was leaning over the side of the engine and listening very hard. That's very strange, said the driver. We're the last train running tonight, yet I could swear that I heard another engine following us. It is an engine, he called out presently, coming along at a great pace. It looks as if we're being pursued. How very peculiar. Toad froze and crouching in the coal dust tried hard to think of something to do. They're gaining on us fast, cried the driver. And the engine is crowded with men like ancient warders waving halberds. And there are policemen with truncheons and men who look like detectives waving revolvers and walking sticks. And they're all shouting the same thing. Stop, stop, stop. Toad fell on his knees among the coals and raising a clasped paw cried, Save me! Oh, save me, dear, kind Mr. Engine Driver! I'm not the simple washerwoman I seem to be. I've no children waiting for me at home. I'm Toad, the well-known popular Mr. Toad of Toad Hall. I've just escaped from prison. And if those fellows on that engine recapture me, it'll be chains and bread and water and straw and misery once more for poor unhappy too. The engine driver looked down at him sternly and said, I fear that you've been a wicked toad, but you're in trouble and distress, so I won't desert you. I don't like being ordered about by policemen when I'm on my engine. And the sight of an animal in tears always makes me feel queer and soft-hearted. So cheer up, Toad. I'll do my best, and we may beat them yet. Shoveling furiously, they piled up more coal. The furnace roared, the sparks flew, the engine leapt and swung, but still their pursuers gained on them. It's no good, Toad. There's just one thing left for us to do, and it's your only chance, so listen carefully to what I tell you. A short way ahead is a long tunnel, and on the other side of that, the line passes through a thick wood. I'll put on all the speed I can while we're running through the tunnel. When we're through, I'll put on the brakes as hard as I can, and the moment it's safe, you must jump and hide in the wood before they get through the tunnel and see you. Then it's full speed ahead again, and they can chase me if they like for as long as they like. Now, be ready to jump when I say. The train shot through the tunnel, and the engine rushed and rattled and roared, until at last they shot out at the other end. Quickly the driver shut off the steam and put on the brakes. Toad got down onto the step, and as the train slowed down, he heard the driver shout, Jump! Toad jumped, rolled down a short embankment, picked himself up unhurt, scrambled into the wood, and hid. Peeping out, he saw his train get up speed again and disappear in a puff of smoke. Then, out of the tunnel, burst the pursuing engine, roaring and whistling, her motley crew waving their weapons and shouting, Stop! 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 When they were past, Toad gave a hearty laugh. <laughs> For the first time since he'd been thrown into prison. But he soon stopped laughing when he realised that it was now very late and dark and cold, and he was in an unknown wood with no money and no chance of supper and far from his friends and home. So, at last, cold and hungry, he sought the shelter of a hollow tree, where, with some branches and dead leaves, he made himself as comfortable a bed as he could, and slept soundly till the morning. Mm -hmm.